Hey everybody, Smart Silver Stacker here. So in today's video, I want to talk a little bit about the history of gold and silver as money. And I think as stackers, we are aware that precious metals have been used as money for thousands of years and probably more than any other commodity or type of currency throughout human history. But I read a very interesting article recently about a new study which indicates that silver specifically, its use as currency and as a unit of exchange may go back a lot further than we previously knew. So we're going to cover that in today's video. And you'll notice I've got this pile of chopped up pieces of silver here, and uh, we'll get into why in just a moment. Today's video is brought to you by SD Bullion, my preferred source for physical gold and silver bullion. You can check them out with the link down in the description. And now let's get into this story. So this was a story that was posted over at LiveScience.com about a week ago, and it's about a new study of treasure hoards from Israel and Gaza. Now these hordes are about 3,600 years old, so they date back to the year 1550 BCE. And the new study indicates that this hack silver that was found, now hack silver is kind of what it sounds like, it's just pieces of silver like this that have been chopped up into pieces. And this hack silver that was part of this treasure hoard, it was not found near any silversmithing tools or any silversmithing equipment. And so the implication of that, according to this study, is that it was being used as a unit of exchange, as a form of currency. Now, I've talked in the past about the Lydians, who I believe around 600 BCE were the first folks to actually coin silver and use a form of precious metals currency. They were actually coining electrum, a natural alloy of gold and silver. But this goes back about a thousand years earlier even than that. And so really the takeaway here, I think, is that when you see ancient humans using silver as a means of exchange, and it's not even coined silver, it's just cut up into pieces, but likely they were weighing it. You know, probably the way things were priced back then was in shekels of silver. And the shekel is an ancient unit of measurement, an ancient unit of weight. And so what they would do is they would just chop up their silver and weigh it, and they would use that to pay for things. And, of course, that is a pretty primitive form of money. You know, there's no melting involved of the metal, there's no coinage, but still, it shows that humans understand that silver is a precious thing, and that precious metals in general are money. I think that's something that we know instinctively. It's kind of an interesting question, you know, is that because of cultural training that we have? You know, is it a cultural thing? Is that why we view gold and silver as money? Because I know, you know, when I see a bar or a coin of silver, I view it as treasure. You know, I view it as highly desirable. And probably most of you stackers uh, understand that feeling pretty well. I don't know if that's, like I said, because of a cultural thing or if perhaps it's somewhat ingrained into our DNA. I mean, who knows? The, uh, use of gold and silver as money may predate even this 3,600-year-old treasure hoard. I mean, this is just archaeological evidence. Who knows? People might have been using this stuff to trade a lot further back than that. And the hack silver thing I find to be particularly interesting. You know, hack silver, they might have been using it 3,600 years ago, but there's a lot of evidence that it was used as currency among groups like uh, Norsemen and the Vikings as well, well into the uh, Middle Ages and the medieval era, there are Viking treasure hoards that are full of hack silver. And if you're wondering where I got this stuff, uh, this hack silver that you're looking at in front of you, this is just like some random silver scrap that I've kind of come across over the years. This piece in particular, this is one that's always puzzled me. So if you are watching and you recognize this, you know what this thing is, let me know. This is something I got out of an estate sale uh, it was a guy who was into uh, radio. He was like a ham radio operator and into kind of tinkering and science. And he had this bag labeled AG.999. And so, you know, I snapped that up at the estate sale. Uh, didn't really know if it was silver or not, but I went ahead and cut one, one of those things up. And I took it to the local coin shop and they tested it with their uh, scanner. And they confirmed that both inside and out, these things are pure silver. So that's just some of my uh, hack silver that's in my stack. I don't know if any of you have any silver scrap or if you've ever come across anything similar to these pieces. But if you have, let me know in the comments down below. Uh, but I also want to talk today about this recognition of gold and silver, and specifically silver, as money in the human psyche. And you know, this is inextricably linked into other ideas about silver that we have in our 
kind of collective consciousness, you know, the silver memes that go back hundreds of years. And what I'm talking about is things like, you know, a silver bullet being the weapon that can defeat a werewolf or how silver is a metal that can protect you from vampires. You know, this stuff goes back in folklore hundreds of years. And I always thought that was a very interesting silver meme that's out there in the collective consciousness because think about what those uh, stories mean. You know, basically what silver, the role that silver takes in those stories is that it's a protection against predatory otherworldly creatures. And I'm not suggesting that uh, central banks and the powers that be are otherworldly. You know, I'm not putting on the tinfoil hat and saying they're reptiles or anything. But certainly there is an element of the existing financial system which is quite predatory. And I believe it preys on your average man and woman. And that's evidenced through things like the inflation tax that we're forced to pay as a result of profligate government spending and debt monetization, all this stuff. And it's so interesting to me how silver is actually the weapon which can defend us against these predatory creatures in the modern financial system. So anyway, I'm kind of going on a weird uh, tangent there, but all of this ties into how humans do view gold and silver as a true store of value. You know, there's not a lot of stories out there where uh, vampires and werewolves are getting defeated with sheets of paper. It's just something to keep in mind for all of us stacking. And, you know, silver, I do really believe, is uh, a shield against monetary debasement. And that is the role that it plays in today's economy. You know, it might not be circulating as currency at the moment, but it still is a long-term store of value. And one of the reasons that humans always default back to using precious metals as money when fiat currencies fail, you know, it's because of this inherent understanding that they are valuable and they are money. And You know, it has really nothing to do with monetary characteristics, but gold and silver just are inherently useful. You know, back in the day in Israel and Gaza, 3,600 years ago, uh, sure, you know, you could use silver as money, but also I'm sure just having any amount of refined metal back then was useful for a number of purposes. You know, you could make tools out of it, you could make jewelry, uh, you can make silverware. Uh, One of the reasons silverware is so useful is, of course, because silver is naturally antimicrobial, so it's a very hygienic way to eat if you're keeping uh, your water in silver pitchers, then that is going to be good for you if you're living in an era before uh, modern germ theory and water purification. So uh, again, this video is just sort of uh, a a strange rant about the nature of silver and how humans recognize how useful it is. I suspect that, you know, there may come a time, maybe even in my lifetime, when we may revert to using this stuff as money again. There's no guarantee, of course. I mean, Silver is an industrial metal these days, and certainly the world is going to need a lot more of it as we transition to clean energy, you know, solar energy and electric vehicles. And I I know, I know, a lot of you are banging your desks, banging your uh, mobile devices, saying electric vehicles and solar will never work. Yeah, well, that doesn't mean that the powers that be aren't going to try it, you know, and uh, there are certainly a lot more of those things around the corner, and they're going to need a lot of silver. So I don't know if there's going to be enough silver to go around and also be money, but I do believe that regardless of silver reverting to money or not, it is going to be a lot more valuable in the future, whether that just be as a commodity or maybe also as a monetary metal, and hence the protection from the debasement of our currency. So that's a little bit of a different one for you folks today. I'm sure we'll be back to the central banks and the geopolitical doom and gloom in videos in the near future, but today I just wanted to talk a little bit more philosophically about silver and give us a little history to put the current situation into perspective. So let me know what you think in the comments down below. Thanks for watching, everybody. Stay safe and happy stacking. Smart Silver Stacker, out.